What we need to do when we've dug our worms is we need to first just wash them off a bit and lay them out on some newspaper just to get the sand off and uh, also to go make them uh, so they'll accept the flower so it'll stick and make them nice and wet and put them on the newspaper it'll make the newspaper wet and wet and that's a pretty straightforward process just lay them out in in the same direction in like stripes I like to leave a little bit of room between them so they don't end up getting into a big sticky mess because that can happen sometimes but as you can see it's, it's reasonably quick to do this process and it's going to give you worms whenever you need them I started doing this because I got tired of every time I needed to go fishing I had to first figure out uh, where I was going to get the worms and if there was high tide or low tide if I could dig them myself and, and I just got tired of it and I thought there's got to be a better way than just salting them because the salted worms a lot of times they're so hard it's just like leather and, and you can sit and fish with them some days and there's not a single bite. And this is a, I've tried this now, I've been using this method since about 2000. So I know that it works. I'm, I'm not going to compare it to any other type of fishing, just to say that uh, I only use this type of uh, worm now when I'm fishing. So it can't be completely bad. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm just covering them with flour, get them covered right over. Soak in, make it soak in a little bit from the worms, and then I take the salt, and I just need a little tiny bit of salt on here. I'm going to be just a little bit. Here we go. And this is this is preparing the worms for transport to home. And when I get them transported home, then I'll show you the rest of the process. But this is uh, this is a, a kind of stage two. This here, um, and as you can see, I'm, I cover them over with newspaper, and then start on the next layer. And it depends how many worms I have with me. Home, uh, how much newspaper I'll need with me. But this is an easy method. It's it's quick. It's uh, easy done. Usually when I'm packaging the worms at the end of this the, the stages uh, I'll package them in about 50 to 60 worms in a packet and that's definitely enough for a day's fishing because when we're using the bait elastic the worms are not getting off the hook on just with the uh, crabs biting on them and the fish are certainly not biting them off the hook. So a worm can last quite a while. It's a reasonably straightforward process. It's I discovered it because I wanted to make something that would keep the juices from the worm, which normally just uh, get lost in normal storage of worms and uh, and at the same time I wanted a worm that was still when I put it on the hook uh, was still soft and still smelt like worm not just like a bucket of salt so that's why I started using I discovered this thing I thought well I'll try what, what about trying something else instead of salt and I discovered flour using flour 
and it has worked rather well, I must say. Sometimes in life you can be lucky and find something that will be quirks. See again, got the worms up on the paper, nice straight lines with them, put the flower on. They're going to wiggle a bit because they don't like getting dried out. If you're uh, if you're in a situation where you don't have some place in the transport, if it's a car or whatever it is you're driving, or a motorbike or, or, or a, a, a moped, then make a box that's about the same size as an, as an open newspaper, and you can do it all in a box, put it on the back, and and home with it. So this is now you've seen the way this part of it's done, and the next part. Uh, will be when I get home with the worms and then I'll show you what I do with them from there on in. Now we've got home with the worms and we'll lay the paper, I'm laying the paper out on the top of a freezer and uh, you can see they've wiggled around a bit, they're not all in lines anymore, but um, they look fine. Some of them are starting to die, and, uh, and other than that, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to put a little more flour on, and a little, and a, and a little tiny bit of salt, but uh, mostly flour, so they get plenty of that flour uh, around the body. Plenty so they they get it all around the body so it's not uh, only on the one side. And just like down at the at the beach, I just put a little bit of extra salt on. I'm sure that this can be used without the salt, but I've found that putting a little salt together with the flour does help it uh, have a little bit firmer uh, consistency. When they're finished, uh, have been frozen, and you take them out to use them, as soon as they start to thaw up, it's like licorice nearly, um, a, a really soft licorice. And, uh, and it's, it, it, it contains, because uh, when they're, uh, they've been rolled in this, uh, what happens is they, uh, the, they get rid of the fluids in the body that comes out and lays in the flour so when you tie them on the hooks there's flour as well and the flour will slowly give off the scent in the water of the worm so as long as there's a fish somewhere near it it'll smell it and it's a good idea to do this just roll them a little bit around in it make sure they get it all over so, so you can see like one like this one is uh, hasn't got it all over so we'll just roll it around a bit in it go through them all like this then what we'll do is we'll let the worms stand here on the freezer uh, it doesn't have to be a freezer, of course. You can put it on, do this on anything—a table, out in the garden, wherever you want to do it. Um, it doesn't really matter. But what you need to do is they shouldn't really be in direct sunlight, but they should have air so they can dry 
in the flower. So, and this will, I mean, if you, if you dig a lot of worms, you could actually, you know, within a couple of days, dig enough worms to have all summer or even have all year. <laughs> The advantage is with this being, as I said before, that uh, you're not using a lot of worms when you're out fishing with them because the fish are not getting it off the hook. And we can see this is going really well. If they start to stick to the paper, make sure you get them up so they're on the flower and they're not sticking to the paper. Pretty good. And then it's just a question of giving them a couple of hours and when they've had a couple of hours standing here they'll all be more or less dead and uh, they'll have stiffened up a little bit and then we'll uh, pack them ready for the freezer. But uh, it's a really simple thing this way of doing the worms and uh, it's going to ensure you that you always have worms to go fishing with. This is kind of like uh, people making pies and putting meat in pies. This is just the same for fish. So, it gets a bit sticky with all the flour and everything. It keeps some water handy so you can just wash your fingers off. And that's about it for that part of it. We'll look at it again in a couple of hours and uh, see how they're doing. Okay, the worms have been standing here now for a while and they're starting to stiffen up a little bit. They're really sticky. Um, they're just about right now to put in the freezer. So. Now we're going to do uh, the switch over to the packaging they're going to be in in the freezer and and, uh, and where they'll probably sit for maybe a couple of months. Some of these worms, um, I I'm, in May month I use the time to dig. Every time there's a low water I'll use the time to dig the worms and that will give me enough worms for the rest of the year for what I need. Um, so they could be sitting in my freezer uh, some of them will be sitting there in December uh, but most of them will be used throughout the summer but some of them will be still be there and maybe like the ones I've been using lately and it's uh, it's May month now and I'm still using some the last three packets actually from last year and they're still working fine so in, in theory they should be able to hold indefinitely uh, once they're frozen down. So now I'm going to set up on the freezer that's uh, right next to this uh, to put the worms on. So we'll switch over to there. Okay, we'll set up on this freezer. We'll take some normal cling film, normal kitchen film here and put it there and then uh, we'll find some flour same direction facing the same direction there 
So they're just like lines on a piece of paper. I'll put them on like this. Roll them in the in the flower where they're sitting on, on the newspaper first. Roll them and then put them over. And if they want to bunch up a bit, just, just let them do it. Actually, when you're doing sandworms this way, uh, normally when you dig sandworms, if there's some that you know go to pieces or something, then you don't bother keeping them because uh, they're not going to stay alive. But with this, you take everything. So if you happen to cut a worm over while you're digging, you take it with you because it'll all work. So. roll here on this side I'm rolling it in the flour and then putting it over on this kitchen film and you can see right now what's happening is they're staying where I put them they're not wiggling off anywhere so they're all just staying right where I put them and that's that's the way, then they're, then, they're, then they're right. They get plenty of flour rolled onto them because that's what's going to give the smell when you start using them as bait. That'll give the worm smell out in the water and attract the fish. So when you take them out to use them and they've got all this flour stuck to them, whatever you do, don't don't brush the flour off, it's not that's supposed to be there, you're supposed to use it with the flour. And actually even when you've thrown out a couple of times and you pull in, there's still flour uh, between the lines of elastic that are holding the worm on. And when we get to the stage where I'm going to show you how to put them on the hook, um, You'll see what I mean, I'll show you. But right now, I put them down on this. I think today I've probably got enough for a couple of packets, so I'm just going to show you the one. I'll roll the one packet so you can see it, how it's done. I'm usually using somewhere between 50 to 60 worms on a fishing day and I'm fishing with two fishing rods if I'm fishing flatfish. But actually the uh, the worms will actually catch anything. I mean I've caught sea trout on these worms and why they would want them I don't know. But uh, it does seem to be a universal a universal type worm. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I can catch uh, anything on them. Been uh, catching codlin, flounder, just everything. So there's no, there's no problem. They're even getting weaver fish, fish on them, and I'm not too happy about them. But. Uh, Actually, all this flour that is left over on the newspaper when you've finished, what you can do is you can put it up in a tin or, or a, a dish or something, maybe a plastic th container, and then when you go out to dig worms next time, instead of using for the transport home, instead of using good flour, you can use reuse flour. Because there's nothing right, there's nothing wrong with the flour itself. It's, and it's actually, it's, I would imagine that it'll have a bit of extra scent in it because it's had these worms in it already. When you get some of these big worms, that will reach right over the kitchen film. Um, sometimes I've done that there because they're so thick in the end, and they've still got quite a bit of. Uh, 
of moisture in them. What I'll do sometimes is I'll just uh, cut the end off to let the moisture out. But uh, it's, it's not really necessary. It's not really necessary. They'll freeze and the moisture will come out under freezing and it'll go into the flour. I mean it all works. So There we go, we're getting down at the, at the far end here. Put this one in here. Probably room for six or seven more here. And you can see all the time I'm just laying them in straight lines, like lines on paper. And that way, when you get to use them, you can take one at a time. And what happens is, if you're taking it right out the freezer, I usually uh, I mean, I know it's tempting to take things out before you go fishing, you know, take it out a couple hours before and let it thaw up, but I don't do that. I just simply take it out of the freezer and off I go. And then what happens is, the first ones to thaw up are the ones on the out, in the outer layer of the, of the roll. So they actually thaw up just nicely and the ones in the middle keep frozen for quite a while. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, one, two, three, four. Couple more. Couple more, and I've got fifty. There we go. Fifty. As you can see, it's going to stick to your hands, so that's just one of the things that happens. I mean. Okay, now I've got it all on the cling film. What I'll do is I'll give it a little bit of extra flour so it will get flour between the worms so they don't all stick together in one big bunch. should be 50 worms in there and then what I'll do is I'll start to roll I'll start to roll and if they get a little bit close to the edge of the thing I'll just push them a little bit in so there's no worms sticking out and you can see on the cling film here the one that's in under the, the cling film the kitchen film it's starting to get some of the blood out into the flour and that's exactly what you want. You want that flour to stick to the worm and be really full of a juice from the worms. And then we come all the way forward here. And we'll cut it off. Well, if you give it a little twist up, it makes it easier to, to get it going. And then I have it in, in a normal one of the small garbage bags. And I'll put it in like this. There we go. And then I'll roll that like that. And there we are ready to put in the freezer. And what I do is I put them in uh, bags and I'll write on the bags what it is is in the bag and the year because if I've got the year here I've got some kind of control over how long I've, I've had them. I'll put it in the bag and that's all ready to go to go in the freezer. Down it goes. So, 
So that's that part. So next we'll be looking at how to put it on the hook, how to use it, because you don't put this one, you don't thread the hook through it, you don't stick the hook in it, you, you tie it onto the side of the hook and I'll show exactly how to do that next. So now I'm going to talk about the fishing elastic and this is uh, this is really easy to get a hold of your local fishing shop has fishing elastic it's very cheap doesn't cost a lot of money and it's really easy to use as you can see I'll just put the worm up against the side of the hook, fold it over and down the other side make sure to keep the fishing line out <laughs> that's going to play around a bit here okay again up against the side of the hook with the worm round and down there we go the fishing elastic hold at the end make sure you get the hook barb exposed if you think it's a little bit too little worm on the hook you just take another piece of worm and put on together with it like that see here and just take it around like this make sure you get right down to the bend in the hook and don't be afraid to put it around a few times all the way up to the top so when you're tying off you turn you take the line and you just do it like that make a loop put it around and pull it tight like that pull it around and pull it tight and then when you've got it tied in, you just take a hold of it and just pull. There you go. And you're off. And you can see it sits like that. And as long as you made sure that the hook barb is, is open, the fish are going to take that. You can see that sits. I mean, it looks, it looks uh, a little strange at first when you're not used to using it. It looks a little strange. You think, oh, nothing's going to bite on that. But they will actually. And as you can see, the worms that I've got here are ready to go fishing. They've been taken out the flower and just put in newspaper. So I can just fold them over like this here, put it down in the freezer and it's all ready to go. So in the morning I just take the package out and that's it. I'm all ready. And you have to realise with this with the worms like this that when you're finished fishing you don't need to throw them away if you're not going to use them right away you just take them home fold them up in the paper take them home and put them in the freezer and uh, you can use them again later and you can do that several times they're still going to be alright to use so that should be all you need to know about using a soft preserved worm. So I hope you've learned something from that.